What's up, everybody? This is Worm News. I'm Moonbaby, aka Cena, aka anything. Um, we're here with some of what everybody's calling the next The Beatles, aka the Frost Children, aka Angel and Lulu. Um, today, October 21st, 2023, in Austin, Texas, Worm News and Frost Children Enjoyers are about to experience something that's gonna break the world record history books. Frost Children is about to interview Frost Children. Yep. So here they are. Thank you, Christina, for warming up the crowd for us. Um, hey, give it up for Christina one yeah, more time. Yeah, she's awesome, Christina. Woo! We're hosting Warm News tonight. Yeah, this is our show. So Frost Children Takeover of Warm News. My name is uh, Lulu, and I am in a band called Frost Children. Woo! And I, today I'm interviewing my sister, uh, and her name is Angel, and she's also in Frost Children, and that's the band that we're in. Thanks, Lulu, yeah. My name's Angel, I'm in Frost Children. I'm a singer, bass player, producer, performer. Um, and Frost Children, and I'm happy to introduce you all to Lulu from Frost Children. Uh, Lulu plays the guitar and uh, vocals and production as well, as well as performing. And we grew up together because we are kith and kin. And that's pretty much it. Mosquito. Well, so, Lulu, I'd, I'd like to ask you a question today, tonight. Today? Tonight. Let's do it. You just came back from a European tour, and you're currently on tour with George Clanton across the United States of America. Mm-hmm. Fuck! And? Has there been a different vibe between European shows versus American shows? For instance, you've been asking fans to bring you organs in each U.S. city. Who, why, when, where, and what have some of these vibe encounters been like? Speak on the organ situation for real, ja, ja, ja. Don't read this part aloud. All right. I'm going to say this one time so that I never have to say it ever again. <clears throat> I am not the one that eats organ meat. Everyone online gets this confused with my fellow sister, Angel. Wait, other people think that you're doing the organ thing? Yeah. Yeah. I think this one was meant for Lulu. <laughs> GFOTY commented on my Instagram and said, I'll bring organs to your next show <laughs> in the UK. And I didn't know how to respond because I didn't want to explain to her that she had me mistaken for another human being with a, a fully different life. Well... But I can speak to the fact that when Angel does cook organ meat in the very small green rooms that we are currently living in, uh, everyone can smell them. And they, uh, and they smell different every night. And they smell damn good. It's given me a burst of energy. And I, the vibe encounters are great. They walk up to me with a cooler usually, and they say, Angel, here's your organ. And I say, thank you so much. And they're like, I had to drive an hour each way to get this. And then I'm like, whoa, that's crazy. And then they're like, can I take a picture? And I'm like, sure, you can take a picture. And then we take a photo, and I take a screenshot of it, and it's really sweet. And I eat it, and it's nice. Tomorrow, I need to receive one in San Antonio, Texas, and I haven't sorted who's going to do that for me. But, yeah, it's been a good vibe, I feel healthy one time the blood from one organ dripped all throughout our bag with all of our other good ingredients healthy ingredients and we had to throw it all out yeah well lulu let me ask you this can you ask me a question oh i'd love to ask you a question let me put this belt aside i'll just keep it here what are you doing with that belt i'm i bought this belt in dallas texas and i'm currently in the process of putting a new hole in it because it's too small it, look at it, it's tiny. That's the whole belt. Damn. So, anyway. Lulu snatched. <laughs> hey, Angel. In an What's inter up? In an interview... Well, if you let me speak. <laughs> in an interview with Moon... In an interview with Moon Baby in 2022, you deemed your song Get What We Want was the forbidden song. Mm -hmm. Because when playing it at your first ever gig on an island in France, crowd members started breaking glasses since then your following has grown significantly why am i getting louder was the <laughs> <laughs> grown significantly has the get what we want curse been lifted 
Uh, have your dreams? I'm not done. Have your dream? Have you? Have you deemed any of your newer songs to have the quote forbidden song effect at any of your shows on tour? Um, get what we want. We have played only probably since that interview a couple of times. We the last time we actually no wait we've been playing it a bunch. I'm wrong. Um, yeah, we've been playing it a bunch. I think it's not cursed anymore. Uh, because we, we only play it at shows that are a little bit cursed because it's so loud and boisterous that we usually play it at venues where it's like, it's just going to be loud and boisterous and that's, that's all there is to say, you know? That's the only time we play Get What We Want anymore. And so it's a little bit cursed, but nothing really, like, breaks or is bad. Like, we played it in Montreal on this tour and it was really it was the punk first rock time. energy funness vibes. <laughs> and, yeah, so I, I, that was the last time we played it on tour. Well, there's a dollar on the ground. There's a dollar on the ground. I think this is karma, actually. In, in fact, it's no longer forbidden. It's encouraged because when you talk about it, money just spawns out of the air. Period. There's definitely a couple uh, on the other side. If, if you don't know, maybe if you're watching, you don't know who we are or what we do. Um, not only do we play in a live band, but we also DJ. <laughs> at uh, mm -hmm. your, your, uh, your local club. And we're, we're some, you know, we play all of our original remixes and original beats that we're making, things like that. And sometimes we have remixes of things that uh, aren't, aren't uh, considered very cool or, or sexy. And sometimes people leave, and I would call those forbidden. Um, for instance, I have a remix of Get Back by the Beatles, mm -hmm. and um, I haven't had any luck with that one yet on getting people to, to move. Not no, they're not dancing. Well, back, I, played it at a, I played it at a Portugal The Man show when we DJed opening for Portugal The Man, and uh, they, they did not like that one. Are you worried about your shirt getting dirty on the ground? <laughs> Period. Well, Lou, that makes me think. Contrary to popular belief, cassette tapes and vinyl from your up-and-coming album Hearthroom are real and can be shipped to listeners the week the album comes out. That's right. Or on or around November 17th. Now that the rumors are addressed, can you tell us what's the story of the album art? Who's Dogs? What's up, dog? And what is the general vibe we can expect these songs to attack? Well, I keep getting the dog's names wrong. Sometimes I call... I know my dog's name because the Lulu's dog's name is... Um, fuck. <laughs> shit. Um, the, the dog's name is Fuck Shit? No. Um, I addressed the name of the dog is Enzo. Enzo. And The name of en my dog is... Uh, for a while, I kept saying that the angel dog's name was Scrat. But I was wrong. So uh, Enzo is um, a very cute dog from Long Island, New York, that I found on Craigslist when I was casting this uh, this little shoot. I went through. I put a Craigslist ad out. Enzo is the or the Enzo is the Lulu dog. Um, he was way bigger than we expected, probably twice the size of the dog he that is, we wanted for the shoot. He's insane. We went through, I put this Craigslist ad out. It showed me the power of Craigslist because I put this Craigslist ad out and probably the next day I woke up with like 40 to 50 requests being like, I want my dog in it. I want my dog in it. But I didn't even say like what it was for. I was just like, it's for like a music thing. And yeah, so that, that's where Enzo is from. He's the other dog was Suki who lives in Greenpoint, New York, which is where we shot it. Suki is me. Suki is the angel dog, and she belongs to a friend of a friend that I was friends with in high school, and her name is Naomi. Fun fact, both the owners of the dogs in the Hearthroom album art are named Naomi. It was yeah. a serendipitous moment, and uh, yeah, I styled the dogs. Oh, this is your question. Yeah, what the hell? Yeah. Give me that. <laughs> so, we went to our good friend, Al Carlson, um over in Williamsburg he has a studio and in that studio we mixed all of the new album and then where exactly where we were sitting is where the dogs were sitting on the album art because uh, we thought well uh, we've done enough album artworks where it's our faces let's 
do uh, let's do the next version of us, you know. And I like to think that we're all we're gonna be dogs in the next life. I agree. Well, let me ask you this. Why don't you ask me a question? Right, of course. I can do that right now. Hey, Angel. What's up? The music video, Lethal, just dropped off your new album, Hearth Room. As well as, as well was made by what some may say, the ween of music video directions, King Con 2K11. Mm-hmm. Using AI, he depicted a coming of age. I took a photo every day for 78 years, and this happened. In what other ways, if any, is AI playing a role in your music? In the world of music, does the future of AI excite or scare you? Um, I think uh, AI, the, the only way we've used AI at all is uh, with King Khan specifically, an artist that we have paid to, to use AI as a tool to create visuals that we want. We've never used it in music, never used it in like anything else. Personally, I'm not against it. One of our favorite artists right now is called Boy What, who makes uh, what I think is the next highest form of SpongeBob AI music, which will be its own genre. It is its own genre. There was Your Boy Sponge in 2021. There was Glorb in 2022. And now there's Boy What, probably the pinnacle of SpongeBob AI music. I personally don't want to use AI in the music yet. It doesn't feel right, but I like it for the visuals. King Khan, some call him the ween of, of music videos. Uh, I'm not really scared by it because I'm confident enough in myself. I think anyone that says that they're scared by the future of AI and music is... Uh, scared of their own music and they're scared of their own abilities to create something interesting and you got to look that ai straight in the face and say hey you're not that interesting i'm cooler than you and that's all you got to do that's my take that's on that's a really good take angel do you perhaps uh have a question for me also i'm gonna um i wish i had more wine well it's funny that you bring up spongebob angel lulu because there seems to be a lot of SpongeBob. You just cult- call me Angel. <laughs> no. Oh. Okay. There yeah. seems to be a lot of SpongeBob culture crossover in the world of Frost Children. You are also notoriously known for the occasional rap battle in SpongeBob costumes, and even have a side project, your boy Sponge, that has two thirty four point five thousand monthly Spotify listeners. Can you tell us more about your boy Sponge, your connection with SpongeBob and music, and what the Bikini Bottom cinematic universe means to you? Unfortunately, well, I'll let you answer that. I will say this. The Bikini Bottom universe means the world to me. The SpongeBob season one through three universe is important to American culture. And any seasons past that is complete trash. And if you disagree with me, you probably don't exist because I think everyone unanimously agrees with me on that. And you know, I really wanted to uh, take that to the stage. So, um, you know, it's out in the open that we did some shows and uh, that's all I'm gonna say on that. Period. Well, it begs the question, what question do you have for me personally? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, thanks. Thank you so much. You wanna hey. pour some in mine? Okay, yeah. No, it's all good. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, you recently did a song remix contest, making all of the stems to your songs from Speedrun public and accessible for people to remix your songs and released an album with remixes. It's true. Everything you said is true, yeah. As musicians and DJs yourself, can you share insight into the inspiration behind the remix context and t- contest and how it feels to see your songs transformed in different ways by other artists? I think, um, you know, we grew up uh, listening to EDM and remix culture is fundamental to EDM. And we listened to a lot of remixes growing up that are near and dear to our hearts, such as the Crookers remix of Day and Night by Kid Cudi, such as uh, In For The Kill, LaRue, Skrillex remix. Yes. Uh, Such as Chris, uh, uh, I forgot what Chris Lake made, but he made a remix of something that was really cool that I listened to recently. And uh, so we just had, you know, it's a club album, it had to be out there. 
people made some really cool stuff and uh, we gave a prize to our, the person that made the best remix. And I actually listened to some today in the car and they're really cool and awesome. Um, what was the other part of the question? Personally, I didn't engage in any remix competitions as a kid, but I know a lot of people do, such as Lulu and my older brother, Brian Prost. Uh, they would do remix competitions for small artists, and uh, you yeah. won one of them, right, Lulu? Uh, I, I, uh, no, I won no, my you won, own, a, you won a different award. I won a local Missouri electronic music composition award, when, in which I had to go to a... Uh, big convention center in Jefferson, Missouri, and I got a plaque that is now on my wall, and it was for my uh, future bass song that in, uh, f from a project that I will reveal soon that I made when I was 18, 17. I'll reveal the name of it. It's called... I was like, it was like me 2016 to 2018 and no, probably even earlier, but in 2015, when I was still making the project, I did a remix competition for Marshmallow Song alone and uh, I didn't win, but it, I got a like by, uh, I got a like on it from SoundCloud by uh, s this artist named Slushy. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Speaking of SoundCloud. What makes a Frost Children DJ set, and what is your favorite type of music to DJ? My favorite type of music to DJ, statistically, according to how many, according to the shows that you may have been to, if you're watching this and have been to, yes, I got it. Hey, hey. shouts out. That's to this freaking bell. punk rock metal as hell, bro. Where'd you get the bell from? We were we were I in the Dallas. Bell from. It's a Dallas place. The food was good. It's definitely more boring, but go. sometimes that's okay. It's like Philly, New York, you know? Yeah. Enough said. No, yeah, I fuck with Houston. I fuck with Houston. Uh, I love to DJ. Um, statistically, I DJ 128 BPM, which um, scholars call the golden tempo. Something in my nose. What's the and what's the tempo? 128 is. That's probably exactly right, actually. It's flatline. Flatline's 128. As is like a lot of dead mouse music. Yeah. And, yeah. and then I've been DJing that tempo for a while. And uh, it, I think, across the board, if you were to DJ that tempo to Why anybody, are you looking that way? I asked you the question. If you were to DJ that across the board, it's just in case you, in case you wanted to maybe get into DJing someday. Um, yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, well, 128 will make any, any person... So, like, do you just come with, like, your box of records, or...? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's my box of records in the form of a little thing called a uh, flash drive. You can get them on cvs.com. And uh, and then you just take it into the the nearest uh, club, and you plug it in, and you go to your playlists, and you find the one called 128 BPM Bangers, and then you just go to the first one that that you know will bring the and hands up, the, and it goes through the speakers. It goes through the PA. It goes through the. Do you the, shout like? Go, go. Well, this is the thing that I, I do really want to get into is emceeing our DJ sets. But we hardly ever have microphones to DJ our own sets. But I really want to do it because I think uh, we've, we're, we've played 31 shows in the past four weeks. And I've gotten really confident on the microphone. So I want to uh, start screaming uh, just like I would on stage tonight, but during our DJ sets. Well... Speaking of working a microphone, and I agree with what you said. Let me be clear. I agree. What question like would you have for me personally? That's a very, very good question. I'm gonna answer that question with a question. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's fine. I guess. Yeah. So you used to curate shows under Jurassic Thunderdome in New York. Mm -hmm. Last one being in Bushwick, 2022. Mm -hmm. Let's say you threw a Jurassic Thunderdome music festival with. Maybe Frost Children headlining? Mm. 
Can you each list, and I'm, you know, I'm saying each, you know, just including myself into this question so that I would, I can also give my take into it. Of course. But just at, at first for you, can you list mm. three dream artists that you would book? Mm. And would you promote it on, like, social media and uh, accounts such as, you know, maybe um Abers fam or oh, you know, things like that oh yeah, yeah yeah i like that one yeah i think i would uh man three top i would book probably yeah frost children um in this situation do i have unlimited budget anyone in the whole world even if they're dead you have oh uh, even if they're dead mm-hmm. you have two million dollars i would book uh three million it'd be frost children frost children about five no, five million no, no, I would book Cornelius, I would book Haru Namori, and I would book T-Pain. I would book Gary Wilson, the Alessi brothers, and Stevie Wonder. Period. And a special DJ after is by Prince and Paul McCartney. Back to back John Lennon. But the... Well, we'll exactly. have a Ringo Starr impersonator. How about that? Because we ran out of budget. The yeah, John Lennon's rate's super low because he died. Some say he died. Some uh, sheeple like to think that he died. Yeah, yeah. But, you know. That begs the question. Um, theoretically, like, would you have any advice for anyone looking to grow and expand their creative projects of any kind? Say if you're um, trying to... If you're struggling to do it... Um, you should just put out whatever you have now and move on because I don't think that whatever you're making right now you might not like it a year from now and that's okay because that's because I have the same problem too so you but if I kept waiting then I would have nothing else so you should just Put out whatever you have right now. If you're watching this, open a new tab and go to SoundCloud and post wherever you have, and then uh, and then get working on the next thing. And also, if you have a song you're working on, a poem you're working on, an essay you're working on, remember, like yesterday or maybe it was a couple days ago, you typed something and you were like, no, I can't actually say that. I can't actually put that in the thing. That would be crazy. run it back and actually put it in the thing because that moment was your moment of clarity and you shot it down with your stupid ass society brain so run it back remember that thing that you wanted to do and do it because you were right and you were wrong to shoot yourself down that's what i would say if i had been asked that question personally and that's on cis period poo Oh wait, should we? I have a, I have an idea. Should we do a song? We should just do a song while while we're here. We should just, should we just say fuck it? I say beep it. Okay, let's do it. Hey, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. I'm eating oats from a mug I think I'm falling in love And there's a smile on my face I think I wanted to stay Right now I wanna survive For once I don't wanna die Some things are falling away I can't tell what's a charade What if the sun doesn't rise? What if the stars aren't aligned? There's not a thought on my mind Till I can have you as mine I'm eating oats from a mug I think I'm falling in love And there's a smile on my face I think I wanted to stay Oats from a mug Falling in love Smile on my face Wanted to stay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm eating soup on a roof. I think I'm falling for you. And as I stare into space, savor the you flavor taste. I crashed a new Subaru. Way back in Kalamazoo. Cause I was staring into your eyes of decadent blue. What if a meteor strikes? What if the stars aren't aligned? There's not a thought in my mind. Till I can have you as mine. I'm eating oats from a mug. I think I'm falling in love. And there's a smile on my face. I think I wanted to stay. I'm eating oats from a mug. I think I'm falling in love. And there's a smile on my face. I think I wanted to Stay. I'm eating oats from my mug. I'm falling in love. Smile on my face. 
I think I wanted to stay I mean, I was from a mug And I'm falling in love And there's a smile on my face I think I wanted to stay Boom That's a new one from Hearth Room um, well, that's it for Worm News with Frost Children. If you liked what you heard, go and check out our music and our new album called Hearth Room out on True Panther Sounds, November 17th, everywhere. And also catch us on tour next year and our headline show, February 2nd in New York City with Ulf and Jeffrey Lewis. Anything else you would like to add? I think that's it. Hell yeah. We should head back in.